Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Got cameraman Caleb, my son, behind the camera again today. Thank you, Caleb, for being here. This is a 2012 Dodge Caravan Chrysler Town & Country, uh, one of those vans with a 3.6 liter engine. Customer complaint is a misfire. Uh, I haven't pulled the codes yet. What I did do off camera is I did a real quick sound test for cranking compression. I want you guys to listen to that. I have everything set up to do a relative compression test, so you kind of have an idea where we're going with this. Um, but I want listen to the way this thing cranks. You can kind of hang there, Caleb. I'm just going to do a pedal to the floor, clear flood crank. Uh, technically, might not be clear flood with the pedal to the floor on a system like this that's drive by wire. It kind of automatically does default stuff. So I don't know if we'll call this clear flood or not, but take a listen. All right, so to my son, that sound of that cranking doesn't really mean much. To the trained ear, we're done already on this car. This has a compression problem. And uh, I just need to tell Pete what cylinder it is and uh, if it is in fact a mechanical problem and then I'll have Pete do the work. So that's our goal here. So I'm just gonna read codes on this. I haven't even identified the vehicle yet. I, Customer complaints of misfire and you heard the way it cranks. Uh, my suspicions are absolutely that this is a compression problem. I'd be surprised if it is not. And first thing we'll do is we'll go to codes. Multiple cylinder misfire is the only code that's in memory. Um, that's good enough for that right now. I'm gonna go right to our compression test. And um, this is the part I wish I could see. I wanna teach my son this too. Uh, well, maybe Caleb, you can learn this in the edit. So I'm having Caleb it's going to be helping me with the camera and edits. Um, I'm going to my scope multimeter, going to my lab scope. I am not picking an amp probe here, guys. I'm using a low amp probe that's designed to really only read up to 40 or 60 amps, and I'm going to measure starter current with it. So there's some detail that goes in with that. Um, volts DC is where I'm going. What I'll do for you guys that maybe are watching your first relative compression test video is um, you're gonna want some more information than I'm gonna give you here. And so what I'll do is I'll link some other videos I've done on relative compression testing in the description of this video. Guys, make sure you're opening up the video and look at the description. I'm putting tools and videos and, and relevant information for you guys. So uh, I'm gonna do this quickly. We're gonna get done. A lot of you guys already know how to do this test. So here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna set my scales um, to a single channel we're gonna stay on volts we're gonna go two volts of course we want to make sure that we do not have any trigger setting let's just go no trigger and two volts and what we want to do is two seconds two volt two second screen is my typical one that i like to do can't see my screen Let's invert that in case I got that backwards. This is one of the reasons you want to pull your zero line up off the bottom. Did I see that drop? I got a glare out here. No, so I got no reading there at all. So what that means is I went on the wrong wire. I took a guess. The only downside of the, the low amp probe, you know, if I was using the jaws of a high amp probe, I could go around both of my cables. And because I'm using a low amp probe, I had to pick which one my starter cable was. I picked this one first because I thought it was bigger and I assumed incorrectly. That's gonna be the one that goes to my power distribution box. So that means this one goes down to the starter and conventional theory flow. You see the arrow on top of this. So I want it pointing down that way. I shouldn't have to invert it. And the other thing you wanna make sure is the jaws of the amp clamp are, oh, it would help if I turned it on. I never turned it on. Yeah, maybe. Okay, 40 amp setting, if I didn't say that before. So I'm setting this on a 10 uh, millivolt per amp setting, and that means on a two volt scale, if you do your math, that's 200 amps. My assumption was that cable looked bigger to me, and that's the one that went to the starter. So again, 40 amp setting, which is on this tool, is 10 millivolts per amp. So one volt, one volt is the same as 1,000 millivolts. 
okay? And one volt would be 100 amps on that setting. Two volts is 200 amps. All right, let's see what we got now. Let's try it again. Okay guys, so um, I really wanna teach my son this, but he's gonna learn it in the edit. And what we have here is absolutely a mechanical problem with this motor. And let me get my cursors in here and we'll talk about it. Uh, I'm gonna start on um, this high peak right here. And then we need to count um, cylinders. Uh, there are six cylinders on this engine, so we should have six humps. And then that means that I'm gonna put this one in that location. So count them now. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and back to one. And so what we have is two cylinders that are low on compression. And uh, the reason that the one next to it, so if you look at this low one here, and then you look at the high one next to it, the reason that this one's so much higher is because of the low cylinder. So don't let that throw you off. So you look at this high one here, and then maybe you look at these two and you say, well, that one's higher than these two. So these two must have lower compression than this one. And that's not the case. It has to do with starter speed and uh, the result of a low compression cylinder. The next cylinder will be higher. This is a common pattern you'll see. And so I'm not worried about that one being higher. And if you look again, you'll see the same characteristic. There's your low cylinder and then you get a high one again. So this one and this one, this one and this one are totally fine. Our issues are the two low cylinders. And the last part of this is really we need to tell Pete which two cylinders are low on compression and then we'll just be done. I'm not getting into the mechanical part. Um, Time-wise today, I'm not gonna get into the pressure transducer testing and figure out exactly where our problem is with this vehicle, uh, because we can do that. We can put a pressure transducer in the cylinder. We can uh, monitor our valving and, and see what's going on there. Uh, just not what I'm doing for this video, just a very fast relative compression video. Random misfire code. Guys, again, the sound was key. Uh, when you hear an engine that cranks like that, um, you have a compression problem. So I just need to sync this up now with an ignition event, and then I can tell exactly which cylinders uh, is causing the issue. Uh, as long as I have the firing order and I can get to the ignition system, that is, I'm a little bit unf unfamiliar with this engine design. This thing is... I see my injectors. I cannot really. Okay, there's a coil I can get to right there. Is this a two wire coil or is this a three wire, four wire? There's a coil right there. Nope, that's a solenoid. was these are buried buried um what's another way we can do this an easier way let's let's see let me let me start the car and i'm going to go back to my scan tool see if this will give me um, I think there's misfire monitors on Chrysler which cylinder is misfiring well that's not helping me looking for misfire counters here to, to give me an idea but that wasn't very helpful all right so I'm using a second channel here and um, I'm hoping I can pick it up it's actually out of my Pico kit and it would be really nice to have the Pico go in here but 
for now we're just going to use this and this is not the right adapter but it should work and what i want to do is go back to my scope screen and uh set up this for the test before we crank it over so i'm going to my home tab scope multimeter turning a second channel on i just want volts and i want to see if i can pick up this coil that's on the back side and the rest of you guys are just going to have to know that i'm laying this on top of an ignition coil I'm trying to all right sweet so the pattern's there it's upside down on the screen so i can it invert that and uh so now what i need is i need a third person that, to crank this for us and we're going to redo this and then i need to know what cylinder i'm on so let me eyeball this engine here real quick so if we look at the cylinder heads um you can see that the back cylinder head is closer to me than this one and so that's suggesting to me that that's number one cylinder back there and we'll definitely confirm that um so what is that um, so if the back cylinder, that's cylinder one, it should be one, three, and five. And so I should be synced off of number five. I'm on the last coil in the back over here, which should be cylinder five. And again, we'll confirm this. In fact, I might have a layout. One of the nice things about the snap-on tools is the guided component meter. And um, what I might be able to get is a firing order right here on this tool. Yeah, cylinder one uh, orientation, furthest cylinder from flywheel on the right side. So here's the flywheel, here's the right side. That's cylinder one, I was correct. And my firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six, so that makes it easy. Uh, as far as the layout goes on Chrysler's, this has been this way forever. One, three, five, I am on cylinder five. Two, four, six up front. We got, we got Ed to crank it. I'm gonna lay this tool on the coil and the reason that i i set up the scope with the engine um running is it's easier to set up the ignition events and then when you do your compression test it should be should be good so we should be ready to go if both channels are on go ahead and crank it ed okay thank you that's all I needed, buddy. So let's talk about this waveform. And I was using, I was using a Pico coilover plug adapter. Worked just fine with this tool. Um, again, pay attention to the description of this video. I'll put tool links in here for you guys too. But let's take a look at this waveform. Cylinder five. Remember the the um, firing order is one two three, one two three four five six <laughs> nice and easy so my green trace let me get my, my cursors out of here now we should see a green trace every six cylinders and we can see that there's start that as uh cylinder five that makes this cylinder six this is one two three four and five again and so our low compression cylinders would be this is cylinder six that's one and two two cylinders two and six have low compression uh, 246 that's up front so um, mechanical concern uh, if time permitted uh, today we could go into some more mechanical stuff but again for this video my purpose was to do a real fast relative compression test pick out the exact cylinders that are causing the issue let the garage know that there's a mechanical problem and then uh, let them handle it that's the way we're going here with this one um, again, I want to remind you guys that I have a website. It is scannerdander.com where I have a book available that I've written as a field manual. Um, and uh, I also have a, another channel. It's called Scanner Dander Premium where I invite you into my classroom at Rosedale Technical College. And um, I really can teach you how to be a diagnostic technician. That's what I do at the school and that's what I'm teaching right here on YouTube. Both on my free channel right here and on my premium channel um, you will find some really good info. The premium channel, what's different about it is my, they're my classroom lectures. I'm literally bringing you into my classroom and teaching you every single day um, this kind of stuff. 
So thanks for joining me guys. I appreciate you guys being here. Whether you're a premium channel subscriber or not is irrelevant. I love that you guys are here and paying attention to what I'm doing. I just want you to know where these resources are. Thanks again and special thanks to cameraman Caleb for being here with us. I'll see you next time.